It's gonna be upside down now. It's not upside down, it's just landscape. Look, we should just invest in a tripod. That just... yeah, I should have brought my tripod, that was unprepared. Mm. No, I need some 12 minutes of my own I'm just going to go through really quickly. It's a stripe. It's a stripe. It's not a falcon. It's a stripe. It's not a falcon. It's a so, hello everyone, my name is Guido Monteleone. I am a senior here at the Marine Academy of Science and Technology, currently enrolled in the Systems Engineering 2 class and involved in the ROV project. Now, ROVs, or uh, remotely operated vehicles, are coming into very like popular use now, seeing as certain projects and certain and um, certain projects are harmful for you. Yes, Mr. Joe. You keep looking back there at words. Like, you need to put some kind of image up there so that everyone knows what you're talking about. So yes, as I was saying, uh, they're coming into more popular use because certain projects are dangerous for humans and this poses a great use for ROV, seeing as a human doesn't have to go do this project. Since it's remotely operated, it allows someone to remotely control it from anywhere else and they can go and do the, the, uh, the project that needs to be done. So in researching ROVs, I had to do a little background information. Uh, ROVs weren't used until a couple of years ago, seeing as it was hard to develop certain materials and certain ways of controlling the ROV from a remotely operated situation. And now that we have these technologies, it allows, it allows uh, easier use and easier creating of these ROVs. Uh, certain people that would like to use these ROVs are companies that would like to do a lot of research or need, or even the military for surveillance or even <coughs> using underwater bombs or in another situation like that. Um, they're also used in retrieval for certain items from, let's say, a shipwreck or something like that, or even ROV was also used to try and find the black box from that recent uh, Malaysian air flight falling down. Well, not falling down, but falling out of the sky. So we needed to isolate the problem, and the isolated problem is that we have a situation in a pool in Neptune, and there's a box that has a block on top, a block outside of it, and a block inside, and the ROV has to be able to obtain all three of those blocks and bring it back to the surface after each retrieval. Now, for this to be done, the ROV needs to have a few certain qualities. And these qualities are my specifications and limitations. So the ROV obviously has to be able to go underwater. So this limits to me, limits me to some waterproof materials such as plastics, PVC, even metals and other choice. Um, it also has to be able to with, withhold the, uh, the payload and also everything that's going to be on the ROV, such as the motors, the mechanical cloth. Um, and this limits me to durable materials, again, such as plastics or metals, because they're the easiest ones to obtain. They're also very durable. They can hold things very easily. So going through this, I have some main ideas for brainstorming. But uh, the first thing I did for brainstorming was design was trying to find different shapes for an ROV. Now we all know of the classic rectangular or square shape that most people use because it's very stable and allows for a lot of materials to be placed onto it. Another shape I researched was a triangular prism shape, which is a little bit different in the fact that it's hard to find places to mount motors correctly because it would have to be mounted straight on and not at an angle. Um, other things that I started brainstorming were materials, such as PVC. Uh, wood was another option. I've seen ROVs made out of wood. Wood poses a problem, though, because it's hard to make it submersible, because wood naturally wants to float because of its density. Um, another choice for more industrial companies would be metal. So after brainstorming, um, again, the specs and limits. So other specifications are it has to be built and tested 
in this time that we're allotted, which is this year. Uh, so this limits me to time, obviously, and uh, the intricacy of the design. Part of Either of you can answer. I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out where this is coming from. Do I know whether we're using the wrong information here or something else happening? Well, I thought if you want some initial background as to like the real life problem, real life situation that we're trying to model and then some information on how we're going to model that situation and possible ways we're going to go about it. Okay, I can see that in yours. Now you're talking about brainstorming. Brainstorming is not even in this. I thought I have it on the rubric. I see ultimate solutions. There should be brainstorming there. Yeah. I know I put it in. No, no, no. No, not on your the outline. Rubric. Oh, on the rubric. Oh. You um, may have put it in. You put it in your outline. But I'm wondering why. Where this is coming from. So and right before that is your design brief. Which did you, you actually skip. state your design brief as? This is what I'm going to do. Uh, I didn't actually say it as the design brief, but I did say what we were going to do. But I just, yeah, I didn't say that it was the actual design brief. All right. Because I don't know that you you covered yours piecemeal in like separate parts. Yeah. As we we're going to design and construct an ROV that has to go 13 feet down, has to recover this. So if you don't like, like that's your design brief, that formal statement of what's actually being done by your group, <coughs> and then leads you to yours of saying, I'm going to design and construct the hull. For that. Okay. So, um, you're you're in, you were talking about are you are you about to get to your alternate solution? Yeah. Okay. I would jump to that. Okay. So after the specifications and limitations, the next step was uh, designing alternate solutions that encompasses the brainstorming and the specifications of limitations all in one. So. There's several alternate solutions, and again, I don't know why the pictures haven't loaded, but that just shows my drawings of the alternate solutions. Um, the first one that I drew was the triangular prism. Uh, this one, again, like I described before, was a little bit hard to develop good situations for because the motors have a, it's a hard, it's a, it's trying, sorry. Um, it's hard to place motors on a triangular piece because they would have the face straight and not angled in like the triangle suggests. Um, another choice that I had was a cylindrical shape. This again poses the problem of attaching motors because they're circle, circular sides and it's hard to attach motors to circles again because of the way the mounting is because for the circles I'm planning on using screws and bolts to bolt them into the side so they won't move and it's hard to do that on an uneven surface such as like a cylinder. Um, and then the other situations I drew were very similar which were the square shape and the rectangular shape. Um, they're both very similar in the fact that they have, it's easier to place the motors on um, and they're probably easier to find parts for than triangular shape because the angles for the triangular shape are very irregular. So you would have to either get them custom made or print them yourself on a 3D printer. Um, so. Um, again, so the design brief is to create an ROV that has to be able to go underwater and achieve the set task that was set out by us and our instructors, which was to retrieve three blocks from an underwater system that we will also be creating. Uh, this concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Um, I'm leaning towards the rectangular shape. Um, the difference between that and the square, I'm still trying to decide, but I think I'm leaning towards the rectangular shape just because I've seen most designs in a rectangular shape, and it seems like that one works. I also asked my mentor which shape is better, and he recommended the rectangular shape. I'd like to see your drawing. It's, it's mm -hmm. yeah. hard to know what's up there, but um, if 
your if your biggest detractor from using a cylindrical one, um, you know, it's because you think you can't place the motors on it. You need to, you know, like a lot of these are cylindrical mm -hmm. in nature. Um, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's totally possible to get them on yeah. that. The, one of the nicer things about a cylinder is it, you know, you got to put this through some hole. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's easier to get a round peg through a square hole than it is to get a square peg through a square hole. Yeah. You have four surfaces versus, you know. So don't discount some of those or, you know, make sure you're looking at the right reason for why. Mm -hmm. I can just my question. Any more questions? said FP1H initial progress update and it gave you a rubric of everything that we were looking for right this is what you should have built yours off of is that yes. page 152? Yeah. it is page okay. 152 yes okay so he's making sure we're all working on the same thing Andrew well, I should probably start a new video for you <laughs> <laughs>